Hey traders, welcome back to Valaresto Capital. It's an absolute pleasure to be back. Uh, I was on vacation. I was in Europe for a couple of weeks uh, and it was a great, a great way to relax. I got away from the market just a little bit and a lot of things happen. A lot of things happen when, when I was away. The market has changed substantially in, in the last couple of months especially in the end of may and in the beginning of june we have seen some massive massive moves in some stocks we also have seen some very strong character changes in the indexes and we're going to cover all of that information in today's video remember guys that this video is for informational purposes only and it's just based on my personal personal opinion and it's not financial advice also guys while you're here remember to like and subscribe and also follow me on my twitter account at valaresto capital so the first chart that we are going to take a look at, we're going to take a look at the SPY. As you guys know, uh, it's very important for me to understand what is the price action in the SPY since based on a proba uh, based in probabilities, most of the stocks move in the direction of the general market. So we want to understand what the SPY is doing, where the SPY is trading and how, how extended is the SPY from general support levels. So that's exactly where we're, what we are going to take a look at here. So first, let me just grab my drawing tools. So here you can see that we have the SPY. This is the daily chart of the SPY. And what we have going on, going on here in the, in, the, in the chart is basically the levels that I'm going to be watching as possible support. Now, something that I want to make very, very, very clear is that the SPY is considerably extended from the 21 uh, from the 21 exponential moving average wave. So the 21 exponential average wave, as you can see, tends to act as a very important level of support or resistance, depending on the trend of the markets. If you take a look at my candles, the candles that I have, they change colors from blue to kind of this red color that I have here in the charts. Basically, the, this helps me identify the, the trend of the market. So basically, if I have blue candles, that means that the closing price of the daily candles continue to be above the low of the wave. The low of the wave is going to be represented by this, by this orange line in the, in the 21 exponential moving average wave. So basically, the wave is just the 21 exponential moving average, but we're taking a look at the high, at the high, uh, at the high closing, at, at the high prices. We're taking a look at the closing prices, and we're also taking a look at the lower, at the low prices. So that basically creates kind of this wave that you're seeing right here. So it's kind of an easy way to understand what is the general trend of the stock that we are analyzing. So of course, if we take a look at the spy, you can see that the spy has been trading above the way from basically from May. So this is actually Actually pretty bullish and also if we don't take much into consideration these shakeout candles we have seen we can we can act, we can make the, the the assessment here that the spy has been trending all the way from April so that's actually something very important to understand and it's a really easy way to make a to make a high probability high probability assessment in the market so back to the charts what is this red line that I have right here? This red line that I have right here is just the 1618 Fibonacci extension measured from the high that we have right here at 418, uh, measured to the low that we have right here at 300, 380.65. So this is basically just a Fibonacci extension, meaning that we tend to see that rallies pause or pull back once they reach that extension. So you can see that we reached that extension on Thursday, and you can see that we're starting to see a little bit of a pullback on Friday. Is this pullback gonna be con a considerable pullback or is it just gonna be a shallow pullback? Well, Based on the indicators that I have here on the bottom, you can see that both the momentum in the in the backup trend indicator, which is basically just a MACD, is pretty positive. You can see that we have the histogram above the zero line and we also have 
the the MACD line above the zero line as well. So this is basically telling me that any pullback into support is going to be a buying opportunity for a continuation to the upside. And you can also see the TTM squeeze that we can we we continue to see that momentum rising and that momentum to be well above that zero level. So this is actually pretty bullish. And if we just keep it very simple, <clears throat> what I'm going to be looking for is just a pullback into levels of support. So basically, my levels of support, and let me just let me hide my, my alerts here so we can have a cleaner view. You can see right here that I have some several levels of support. Basically, these levels of support, you can see these levels that have the D, these levels basically represent demand on an order block. Uh, on an, basically, these represent demand based on order blocks. So let me just see if I have a picture from the other blocks. I think that I have one right here so that you can understand it. Let me see. Well, I don't have one right here, but let me just make a quick, let me just make a quick representation right here. So for example, an order block, for example, if you have a candle that is going down and then you have another candle that is going down and then all of the sudden you have a candle that reverses and closes above the last candle that was going down, then you're going to basically have a, another block because you're having an imbalance. So this is going to act as your level of support. And I'm going to make sure now that I'm back from vacations that I have a lot of time I'm going to I'm going to make sure to make some videos for you to understand what I'm looking for as a demand level. So that's basically kind of a summary of what an order block is. So basically you can see right here that I have my levels right here you can see that these ones are automated levels so it's basically super easy for me to to see where these levels are so i'm just looking for a pullback into those levels you can see that the wave is also rising so any pullback into this level right here which is somewhere around 430 is going to be an amazing opportunity to get some long exposure either in the spy or in some of the names that you're going to be watching to trade. Because remember that most of the names move with the general market so we tend to see a pullback if we tend to see a pullback in the indexes, most of the names are also going to pull back based on probabilities. That doesn't mean that all the names are going to pull back, but we tend to see that, uh, that as a general rule. So we happen to see that pullback into support. Look at your watch list. What are the names that are leading? Look at the levels that they're pulling back. Are they holding? Are they pulling back with the market? Just be really aware that if we pull back to 430, there's a great probability that, that if the names pull back to, to whatever level you're looking, that level has a high probability of acting as support. And then, of course, the expectation is just for a continuation, probably all the way to 450 in the SPY. The market is pretty strong. We don't have to fight it. We just have to, to continue to follow the trend until it stops working. So that's going to be basically the plan for next week based on the general market, which is the SPY. And just as, an, as another thing that I'm looking, I'm looking at, at the JNK, which is basically the high yield bond ETF. This is basically like the junk bonds. And what I really like about this is that you are, if you pay attention here, you can see that what we change the color of the candles, meaning that the junk bonds are also trending above that 21 exponential moving average wave. And you can see that momentum is starting to turn positive. You can see that the squeeze is starting to fire to the upside. So basically the expectation here is the same. I'm looking for a shallow pullback into this level of support right here that we have somewhere around the wave and then a continuation higher. The junk bonds are starting to look pretty, pretty constructive. And you can see right here that we are starting to trade below the below this 92 level. So if we happen to see a pullback in the junk bonds, I think that also is going to be kind of a confirmation that the SPY is also coming into support and then we're probably going to see a break to the upside and you can see that the junk bonds are trading above the, the 50 daily moving average and they're trading also above that 200 daily moving average so that's pretty pretty constructive so in summary just by looking at this the market is pretty bullish the SPY is bullish the junk bonds are also showing some sign of bullish action as well so the expectation is for a pullback into support and then a continuation to the upside now let me share some of the names that i'm looking to trade next week so first of all let's take a look at the at the bullish setup that i'm going to be watching and then i'm going to show you a bearish setup so i'm not going to show you all the setups but if you want to you can take a screenshot these are going to be the names that i'm going to be watching for next week 
I'm just gonna show you a couple so that that way we don't we don't have a super super long video. So first of all, let me show you. Let me show you the IWM, which is a is a setup that I'm that I'm watching pretty pretty closely. And if you want to trade the IWM, you can trade it with options. You can trade it with the IWM, or you can also trade it with the TNA. The TNA is the leverage three X ETF, and that's the way that I'm gonna be looking to trade it. So what I what I like about the IWM, what I like about the IWM is that we have this pretty 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 constructive base. So a lot of people were thinking that this base was gonna break to the downside. Well, the the base actually held. So this one is looking pretty constructive, and you can see that we had the breakout above the base. Now. I have some really, really strong levels of support right here. You can see that I have demand and you can also see that I have these, 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 these kind of this green, green level zone that I have in the charts. This zone is basically just a representation of the 50 and the of the of the 50 percent and the zero and the 61.8 percent Fibonacci retracement zone. So I basically just make a I, I basically what I made was just a Fibonacci retracement from this low right here all the way to this high right here and the 50 percent retracement zone and the c and the 61 8 and the 61.8 retracement zone is right here so this one is coming into support at that demand level and also into that fibonacci uh, support level and you can also see that we also have the wave right here so basically my expectation is if we see a pullback in the markets if the IWM come right here, that's going to be a beautiful opportunity to get long and then look for continuation all the way into this 193 level, basically to close this gap right here. And of course, to make another test of this supply level zone. So that's going to be IWM. Next level, the next name that I'm going to share is going to be ARC. And you can and you can trade ARC with ARC or you can also trade it with TARC. Uh, that's the leverage three. 3x ETF in ARC and this one is also looking pretty constructive. You can see right here that we have the base. You can see right here that we had the breakout from the base. You can see right here that we have the breakout. Momentum is pretty positive, which is also pretty constructive. And what I'm looking here in ARC is if we happen to see any pullback into support, you can see right here that we have also the Fibonacci zone acting as a acting as a possible level of support. And you can also see that we have the wave. So any pullback into this level right here is going to be a beautiful opportunity to get long arc and look for a continuation all the way to that 4568 level, which is an open gap that we have from some previous price action. And of course, we have a little bit of supply. So that's going to be the trade that I'm going to be looking in arc. And then another name that I want to trade, I, I want to show you. I have a couple of really of really good looking leading names right here, but let me show you this one right here. This is Inta, and Inta is basically is basically packaged software. So this is a this is a this is a, a leading sector that we have right here in the market, which is software. And what I really like about Inta, first of all, we have some amazing fundamentals, right? If we and we take a look here, you can see right here that we have some really amazing fun fundamentals. We have increasing, we have increasing EPS, we have increasing sales, which is actually pretty, pretty bullish. And then, of course, what I really like about it is you can see that we have this base right here. This base is actually pretty, pretty constructive. And you can see right now that Inta is pushing into that right side of the base. You can see right here that we have a little bit of a flag, but of course, based on my style, if the market pull back, I'm going to be looking for a slight pullback into this Fibonacci zone. And of course, into that 21 exponential moving average wave, and then looking for a continuation to the upside. This one is looking pretty bullish. And then of course, as for targets, I'm thinking probably this is also a Fibonacci zone, but a Fibonacci resistance zones a Fibonacci resistance zone based on the 1272 extension and the 1618 extension and then probably a test of the higher band of resistance is going to be a possible target for this name right here then let me show you this one right here which is Do CN Digital Ocean this is also a software name and this one is actually looking pretty amazing you can see that here we have the base I love to see these bases. I love to see uh, when we have this kind of price action because we tend to see uh, we tend to see some really strong breakouts, but when then we tend to see some really amazing pullback buy opportunities. So that's exactly what I'm watching here in those CN, and basically the same thing. You can see right here that we came into that Fibonacci resistance zone, ba uh, basically measured from this high right here to this low. We came exactly into that Fibonacci resistance zone. We're starting to pull back a little bit. Then I'm just gonna be looking for a, for any pullback into that 21 
a 21 exponential moving average wave and then of course into that breakout level as well and then of course i'm going to be looking for some continuation in this name right here and then finally i have i also have the cflt which is looking pretty bullish but i want to show you net and the reason what I what I want to show you net is because we have this high tie flag from formation. So you can see right here that we have the pole and now we're starting to see that consolidation in net, which is actually pretty, pretty strong. As, as of momentum, we have momentum continue to be positive, both in the TTM squeeze and also in the in the backup trend indicator. However, you can see right here that we're starting to see a little bit of pause. You can see that net is moving sideways, but the momentum in the histogram is moving a little bit to the downside. So that's one of the reasons that I prefer to buy net as close to the 21 exponential moving average wave, which is going to be acting as support. So those are going to be basically one the names that I'm going to be sharing with you. Of course, once again, here's the entire list if you want to take a look at it. PNW is also looking pretty bullish, a little bit extended from the from the from the base, but of course, if the market continues to act to act strongly, we're probably gonna continue to see more more bullish action in these names. Once again, the the leading sector that I'm watching right now is gonna be software. That's why most of the names that I have on my list continue to be in that sector. So that's basically gonna be it for the video, guys. Just remember that the market is looking pretty extended and something that I, that I want to show you, I almost forget about this. Let me just pull out this picture right here. This is a picture that John Carter shared in his Twitter account. And this is actually something pretty, pretty interesting. You can see that this is the put call ratio. And basically what he's looking here, he's looking at the 10 daily moving average of the pull call ratio. And any, any time that the 10 day, that, that the 10 DMA gets below this level right here, which is 0 0.8, we tend to see some topping patterns in the market. So you can see that we have one here, one here, one here. And now you can see right now that we have a lot of people that are on the bullies on on the bull side so when we happen to see that that's when we tend to see some pullbacks in the market because a lot of people are on the same side of the boat so that doesn't mean that we have to see a correction but at least a pullback into support i think is a very high probability uh, event that is probably going to happen next week so once again guys remember to like and subscribe Thank you so much for being here and I will see you on future videos. Take care and bye bye.